Shaking it like crazy. It is very, very spacious. A lot of people asked me, Vlad, when are you going to get a Mivy? You see those guys, they're already <laughs> shaking it like crazy. You can even dive and fly with this car apart from driving. This is it, 1.5H, almost full spec, only like the head unit and the reverse camera are missing and also the leather seats. But I mean like for what you, what you pay here, it's just like around a little bit higher than 50K ringgit. And it's the pre-facelift model. So this model got the 4AT. This car with the 1.5 is definitely a better one than if you go for a 1.3. And I'm going to show you why this car is so good. Just before I forget to mention it, thank you Didrik, Dominic and Andrew for being my executive producers. Without you, this video would not have been possible. And if you, my dear viewer out there, would like to become a future supporter of my channel too, check out the first link in the description down below, it will lead you to my Patreon page. By the way, with me are the legend Ederin Lim. Hi. You know him, he always does POV, no reviews. <laughs> not a reviewer but it's only for POV. Correct. <laughs> and there is also his friend who is hiding the behind. This is Jun Neng. He also used to have a Mavi Luggy Best with a manual transmission. And I remember yours had the six speed knob but it had only five gears. This is the, the view from the back and yeah as you can see this car has the eco idle. So what this means is this car is an auto start stop system which is uh, in European cars pretty common if they are manual but with automatic it is uh, not that easy to implement. But Perdua actually managed it to put it into the Myvi. Here you can see also the badge with the H. And one thing what's very bizarre about this car, as you know, I'm always renting cars and this car is not from GoCar, it's this time from SoCar. And as usual with those car sharing companies, the cars come in a pretty beat up state. So yeah, the paint, well, it is in a desperate need of a polish. Um, yeah, it's extremely dull and also in terms of the overall condition of the car, like for example, here on the rims, uh, there are the hubcaps, someone probably stole them. I don't know why would anyone do that. You can just go to Mr. DIY and get yourself new ones for five ringgit or even less. Well, a few chips here and there on the paint. Yeah, that's to be expected if you're flying or diving with a car like this. And also here, the scratches here and there. All things considered, for that, that this car came out in 2017, this car is still doing a really good job. Unlike the Bez I had the last time with a few issues with the transmission. So this is the 1.5 dual VVTi engine. It is also existing in a few other models such as the Arus. I think also in the brand new Alza as well and also in other models like the Toyota Vios, Yaris and the Avanza and I think also the brand new Velos too. So this one makes I think 102 horsepower and the the transmission is a, is not a CVT, it is a 4AT, so this one will not have like this uh, CVT wine and whatnot, it is just going to be like a regular AT just doing its job, which this car is actually doing tremendously well. And obviously, um, before I did the review, I also did, uh, I did the cleanup of the car and uh, the dude also did a little bit around the engine, so everything just looks really nice in here. And obviously you see everything is just easily laid out, so if you want to repair it, not much problems. And one thing what about this Mavi is absolutely amazing. This car comes with LED headlights as standard across the whole range. And I think also the rear lights here are also LED type. It just makes the car look more expensive than its actual price tag is really nice. But the thing is, people who buy this car, they don't buy necessarily because the car needs to look good. I mean, the wheels also look good. I mean, for a cheap spec car, or better said, for a cheap car in general, that you get those nice rims, really good. The key things which are even better about this car are found on the inside. So let's go to the rear seats. So you see um, the doors, they open quite wide and you have like here also um, a door bin for your, for your bottle and obviously the um, window switch and here there's a textile finish, not just like this tacky plastic which also sounds like as if it's banging here 
against the door frame. Mm. Yeah, sometimes they really cannot uh, hide uh, the fact that this car is actually cheaply built. But when you get in here, I mean, the seats, they look also really plush. Like the fabric is not the cheap type. It's actually a bit more premium compared to the cheaper models. And when you sit in here, you can see it is very, very spacious. So as you can see, like I'm 178 centimeters tall and this car, I mean, look, it is adjusted to my usual driving position. I have like two fists of space and there is like this kind of small indentation which makes the car even more comfortable to sit in. And I also have a decent amount of headroom. Well, if I go fully straight and I'm brushing already in the roof, but if I'm a little bit slouching, it's just, it's all right. It's a really comfortable way to be in. And also the bench is not completely flat or the floor is too high. I just feel like this, this is the place to be. In terms of amenities, we got here the usual tapau hook two seat pockets and on the other side there's also the hook and there are like two cup holders to fit your boba tea and stuff as well it's not shaking around but if you want to put in a can of coke or something like that it will be too wobbly and then it can spill over another thing what is also really cool there is one usb port so if you want to charge your stuff you can also put it here into the seat pocket yes. This side got the anti-snatch hook, so for the ladies or for the or for the guys who have a man bag, they can just put in their bag like this, and then strap it down. So if a rampit comes and wants to snatch your bag, that he needs to do the extra step, and you can just escape. Very nice invention. One thing compared to a cheap spec car, this car has the adjustable headrests because if you get the cheaper spec, it only will have the fixed headrest. And I think this is a much better thing than having a fixed one, because if you get the fixed one, and if you're a tall person, you can actually bend your neck in case of a crash, and then you'll be GG. This car has 277 liters of boot space, and I mean, let's try it out. Well, if this thing is gone, I could actually comfortably, comfortably stay in the Sure, you can take off. You can take off. Yeah, sure. You can take it off easily. But yes. <laughs> Throw it somewhere on the ground, no one cares about this anyway. <laughs> so as you can see, I actually have decent space in here. So I can, so if someone is going to kidnap me, I will have enough space in here. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> then underneath the boot floor you'll usually have a full-size spare wheel but someone decided just to steal the rim and sell, sell it on the spare on the spare part market probably the lucky buyer who got it from from shop he got a brand new uh, brand new rim and the other guy got maybe like 100 ringgit extra without actually doing any effort also one thing what you can do um, you can fold the seats so they fall down almost flat, like you can load also a bit of taller and longer objects with ease if your 277 liters of boot space are not enough. Oh yeah, before I actually forgot to show it to you, because there, the lever is like a two steps, you can just press it here again, and then you have an even more comfortable position than before. Like if I adjust this one back to one step, you can see the margin is like so. You have here like around three fingers width. I think it's like a couple of degrees where it is a de where it differs. I think if I sit here, it is just a bit too upright. So for my liking, yeah, I think the reclined position is, is the one to go for. Let's check out the passenger side. And well, here you can see the chair and already what you can notice this car has side airbags because the Myvi comes standard with four airbags but the higher versions you can actually see that also here comes also with six airbags this one has the H version and the AV like those two they get six airbags instead of the four what I wanted to show here is the relatively large door bin which has enough space for lots of things and there is a mirror but no light unfortunately here you got your 
cup holder and also some storage space and as in the back here you also get a fabric finish and here is just a cheapo plastic and this seat is not height adjustable it is only for uh, for lean and for the seat position one thing what I have to point out this car comes as standard with keyless entry yeah stop beeping so this is a button operated one but because I rented this car from SoCar it is a remote key with the phone so if you unlock it once it will unlock the car uh, only on the driver's side if you unlock it twice it will unlock the rest of the car it is a common safety feature from Perdua because uh, yeah back then when they produced the cars there were a lot of things like snatch theft and so on but nowadays this is less of a phenomenon just like on the passenger side you also find the very same things just that here you have all the window controls and the driver's side is also up and down which is really convenient if you use this thing right here a very uniquely Malaysian thing touch and go and the seat has extra height adjustment so this is also really nice you're already wondering what this is what happened here well here should be an extra compartment and in that extra compartment you will have a toll reader which is basically a smart tag where you just put in your touch and go card and then you can go to the toll but as you can see it's dismantled I don't know what happened but either Soka removed it so that no one steals it or someone has stolen it already we will never know it's just extremely bizarre because this would just make the journey a lot more comfortable and then I can also use the smart tech lanes you got your steering wheel controls with the seek track volume up and down mode and obviously for calling with the Bluetooth function there is the mirror got also a power power folding feature which my Audi A3 did not have and that car is a much much more expensive car and because it's an eco idle it got the eco idle on and off and here is the VSC so this is probably or no it's not probably it's definitely the safest car I've driven in Malaysia compared to all the other cars I've rented and also the head lamp leveling function here you got the compartment for some stuff for your keys or maybe your parking ticket this one has interestingly no mirror usually they just double it for the easier access but what's even more bizarre most other cars when they are like cheap they do not have a door handle on the driver's side but i like this one especially because it's not the cheap one which is just the handle and that's it it's really fun unlike other cars i've driven especially from proton the signal switch is here on the right hand side which is common found in japanese spec cars in in asia this head unit well it is a very simple one it got bluetooth it got usb and it got radio that's it a cd player would be also really nice but i think that's just too much to ask for at least you can have your phone calls when driving here you got your uh, passenger airbag and here actually you should see who is um how is it called again who has put on the seat belts but this is blank and this is like the lock unlock parking sensor activate or disactivate engine start stop just like the uh, like the keyless entry standard across the range and down here this is the manual it's not an auto it's just a manual digital type aircon controller so hot cold ac memory one memory two i can show it to you later when i turn on the car well this is a container which is like for some loose items but for me this is just good if i want to put in my monster or my red bull inside because here it will not slide around that easily compared to the rear cup holders this is a usb port which is for charging not for the infotainment system and a 12 volt socket handbrake a manual one but if you got an auto you do not need the handbrake anyway and this is the manual mirror let's start the car up Just like in the Saga from 2019, the 60 FPS motion. And let's push the, push the leg on the brake and start up. The beeping is for the Bluetooth because it's connecting to my phone. Let's turn, the, turn it off quickly. This is the shifter. It looks very premium actually. So if I put it in reverse, and here already it's beeping so this means yeah parking sensors are activated and d3 and 2 
So if I want to do engine braking, I just shift all the way to two, but for usual driving, I just stay in D for four. This is the trip computer, so it shows your average fuel consumption, current fuel consumption, range left, the idle start stop when your car is not moving and you're in D, then this is like total time of the idle start stop and this is the total amount of driven kilometers, the current uh, trip and again the average fuel consumption. Unlike in the other cars where you see whether your rear occupants are having the seatbelt on, you see it here on the trip computer. So currently they have the, they have them not on. And yeah, I have like a quarter of a tank left. Adrian, wanna do sound checker? Sound check. Sound check of the Mavi. It doesn't have any muffler, man. <laughs> Wait a minute, it has ref, ref cut. It cuts the revs at 4k RPM. It's a shame, so we cannot do rev bouncing at 6k RPM. This is now bizarre with the aircon control. If I go down, this should be like, it should get colder, but here it's the other way around. So if I have it here, it's max cool. And if I go here, it's it doesn't cool that much, okay? Fan speed, recirculation, memory one, memory two, like if you have like some preset settings you want to use, mode. So it is a, a really a multi-mode one, not like a Proton Saga or a Toyota Vios, which doesn't have it. Rear and front defrost, AC on and off. Yeah, pretty simple to use, but yet effective. Unfortunately, I'm not really that glad with the air conditioning itself because when it's hot, it doesn't cool that well. I know I look like a cycle with this camera on my on my head, but for some POV driving, this is the bestest thing what they have, unfortunately. Uh, let's make it a bit cooler. I uh, P driver. <laughs> Pro driver. Yeah. It's professional. <laughs> <laughs> so, Edwin, tell me about what do you know about the Myvi? Like, how do you enjoy driving it yourself? You did also review on your channel. Actually, I'm enjoying the car. It's so light, so light, and uh, it's very agile. Yeah, yeah, it's fun to drive in city, but it's not fun on highway. <laughs> yeah, on right. highway, it's not stable, right? Yeah, it's too light. Too light. Yeah, it's, okay. It's made, it really made for city drive only. It's not for highway. Actually, I found the fabric seat is quite comfortable. I, it's even comfortable than the, the fully leather seat. Many people say like Myvi is a flying car. Well, that's mostly because people think the Myvi is a car which is just made to bully people. And I think it is true because I've had a couple of encounters where people who are tailgating me like crazy were in fact in two out of three cases were Myvi drivers. The other one out of three were BMWs. <laughs> well, it is a supercar bully because like the people who drive this, they they kind of get the get the mood that they become immediately an asshole when they are driving it and i mean for me for my driving style this fits me also very well because back at home i drive a kia soul and that is a very similar looking car to the myvi it's also very square-ish and very compact and it is a car where people would not think that you're going to be an asshole and same as with the first gen Myvi which exists in Europe as a Daihatsu Syrian they will not think that you're an asshole they will rather think that you're a granny who will drive extremely slow but here it's the exact opposite and I love it now the key idle kicked in and there's like the counter for how long it is running so the longer it runs the better it is for your fuel economy and i think for city driving people can bash the equidal as much as they want it is not perfect it has a few flaws but this system actually really works well because you actually save uh, fuel with the um, weird timing of the traffic lights i think even proton should introduce it but here's the problem if you ever so slightly lift the foot of the brake it turns the car on I don't get it, why it is doing that. Actually, the car in the front in Switzerland, there is an importer which imports this van as well, but the EV version only. West. EV? Yeah. Oh, for the EV. van? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Uh, 
but when we drive up uh, uh, on the potholes, do you actually feel like a lot or is it like... It's uh, actually better than the second gen. Okay. Uh, might be like the best. Yeah. A little bit solid. Mm -hmm. I find that the uh, face lifted, my V is better to, uh, better to drive yeah. with the CVT uh, transmission. I can imagine that because I heard also that that one is a lot faster than the yeah, 480. Faster. You don't get awkward RPM. Because this one has just uh, this one drives linear, but also like the CVT from uh, what I've heard is also driving very linear. Yeah. So it's not like very awkward like the Saga CVT. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. actually the previous model with the manual so this one was a lot faster right yeah the first video what I actually seen about the manual uh, my third gen was from he way saying where he reviewed it and it was actually one of my favorite videos of him there the, the manual transmission it was squeaking like crazy mm -hmm. maybe that's one of the reasons why it was not that popular too except for people being addicted to jams and also just note the steering position like I mean I'm not even corning that much or even if it's straightened out like the steering wheel position it's still more to the left side so weird something wrong with the alignment and the balancing <laughs> right yeah it could be could be <laughs> and also like everywhere the cheap plastics I mean this one I gotta give credit to Proton that they actually made the Saga a lot a lot better screwed together than Perudo with the Mivi. But the thing is, like in the Mivi, you do not care about the plastics; you care about the passive safety and about the fuel economy and in, and also about the right comfort. Because, like, despite this being a in Tosun, as some people might say, this is actually a pretty good deal, a much better deal than the Nissan Almera. So in order to wrap up this car, how many stars would I give it? Or better said, how many points from 1 to 10? I think this car is a solid 9 out of 10. Just because of the good value for money, high safety specs and also with the reasonable comfort. The one reason why it doesn't get 10 out of 10 is because not any car can be perfect, especially since um, the car has like a lot of cheap plastics which could be solved better and also the the curve to improve the car also was done with the facelifted version with the CVT which is apparently a much better one compared to this model. However the new one doesn't get like fog lamps which is quite sad because the fog lamps are definitely needed um, if you go uphill on Gunting because it gets a lot foggy then. How would you rate it Ederin? It's a reliable car and uh, it's a, like, overall it's a very good car. Com yeah. But compared to Iris, I would choose Iris. <laughs> yeah, because, Iris uh, is more uh, is more of a driver um, focused uh, car. But yeah. I mean, like the Iris, well, yeah, call that, call that. the CVT is not uh, well. The CVT is not that good, but I mean the suspension is the my, is the much better one because with this one I've been driving uh, on it on uphill and gunting, and I must say. It was sliding like crazy in some corners. I really trashed it there. All right, guys, that was it from my side. I hope that you enjoyed this video of the MyV. And if you want to check out the video of the Saga VVT, right. click up here in the in, on the right side of me. And stay tuned, and I hope to see you the next time. Bye bye.